Uh, you want kind of what, what you got right here, right? Okay, the name was uh, Robert L. Traw, T-R-A-U-G-H, and you want the rank that I retired at? I retired as a Master Chief Petty Officer in the Navy, and my uh, f first service number was 552-5570, and my place of birth was uh, near Clarksburg, but I was raised over <laughs> Copen, and I went to Burnsville High School, and uh, life back then was pretty rough. We was just getting over the uh, the depression, mm -hmm. and I enlisted on the twenty eighth day of August, nineteen forty two, and uh, in the Navy, and uh, we went to basic training at Great Lakes, Illinois, and uh, we finished <coughs> up uh, basic training. In nine weeks, and I went aboard this ship, this USS Columbia, in nine weeks from the time I enlisted in the Navy, we went down through the Panama Canal and over to the Tonga Islands, and from Tonga to New Caledonia, New Caledonia to the New Hebrides, and from the New Hebrides into the Solomons. And we engaged the Japanese uh, as soon as, on our way from the New Hebrides to the Solomons, we had our first air attack. <laughs> and I think that's the one where the USS Chicago was sunk. And uh, we fought all through, all through the Solomons and up through to New Guinea. That area that we went through there was called the Strat. It was a, an area in between two chains of islands. <clears throat> and we had lots of uh, engagements in that area. The Japanese were trying to uh, recover some of their soldiers that were stationed on Royal Canal and Bougainville and, and those areas. And uh, they couldn't afford to bring the transports down in there, and they was evacuating them by th their destroyers. The Japanese destroyers was much faster than ours, <coughs> and they would bring them into those islands at night and try to pick up their Japanese soldiers and try to get them back. Well, we was... Uh, we was fighting them every, at every opportunity. We had some terrible times at night. We had radar and they didn't. But they had a very good uh, uh, night vision of scopes that they used. We didn't have any idea before the war that we would even be engaged in a, in war or any kind of thing like that. We were just getting over the depression or was just getting the country back into production. While I was aboard <coughs> ship, my job was uh, to uh, ma help maintain the ship and also uh, supply the ammunition for the guns. I was in a five inch gun battery and we shot so many rounds through that gun that our gun barrels got red hot, had to be cooled off by a fire hose, and we had to have the gun barrels replaced twice because we shot the inside of them out. And uh, we had a good bunch of so a good bunch of sailors, and uh, come from all parts of the United States. 
and we have uh, uh, ships reunions now <coughs> where we try to get together with some of those old timers. I'm supposed to go down to South Carolina at the end of this month, but I'm afraid I won't be able to make it because of health problems. Uh, you said special edition of comic books. We didn't know what a comic book was. You had an artist aboard ship. Uh, you had an artist aboard ship. Yeah, he was. Uh, he wrote. This artist wrote uh, articles for the newspapers and things like that, and he made he made pictures for the for his own use. But we didn't get, <laughs> we didn't get much use out of it. Ciphers was his name. And. Uh, Um, yes, I did take up smoking while I was in the Navy. I smoked until 1968, and I finally seen the light and got and quit. But I'd already, they'd already found a spot on my lung at that time. And uh, it's a good thing that I, I did, was able to quit. Cigarettes at that time cost 20 cents, I mean 10 cents a cart, uh, 10 cents a pack. At that time, we bought cigarettes for 60 cents a carton. Now they're about three dollars a three dollars a pack. Some in New York for seven dollars. And the GI Bill of Rights. Well, we didn't know anything about that at that time. Home loan, small business, education, unemployment. I never got a chance to participate in any of that. Compensation. Uh, well, you see, when I retired, uh, they retired me with a hundred percent disability because of the injuries that I had during the world and my heart condition. And uh, they they used to tell us that. The, we was going to get 75% of our base pay. <laughs> They've squeezed down on us now. We don't get that much. But anyway, they, they pay us a pretty good, pretty good sum for retirement. Well, when we returned home, you know, what we do was basically the same thing that we was when we left. You know, a four-year period didn't change much. But the changes now is just completely different. Everything's different now. Like you used to buy a car back at that time for approximately a thousand dollars. Now they're thirty thousand dollars. I can't advise the next generation other than we need to maintain a very strong military we need, to, we need to maintain a very strong economy and we, we have been helping out countries all over the world. Like we've got troops in Germany and Japan and Korea and the Philippines. And every place that we've ever been <coughs> to help, we've still got troops there. Now, we need to bring some of those on home. Uh, and uh, I don't know just when they can do that. But uh, eventually you get too much of a good thing. My uncle used to tell me 
too much of the good stuff's not good for you. And uh, let's hold up right about there. Um, and uh, uh, our basic training at Great Lakes was very <coughs> brief. And when they fin when we finished Great Lakes and we got on a big troop train, I think there's 25 coaches, all sailors. We went to Norfolk, Virginia by train. And we got off and they took us over to uh, one of the barracks there. It's, I think they call it St. Helena Barracks in uh, Portsmouth. And we waited there a few days. Our ship was out on shakedown cruise. It had just been built in Philadelphia. Came down and offered for shakedown. As soon as they come in from shakedown, while well, we went aboard. And naturally everything was new and everything was strange. And we started working this ship. Uh, one of the biggest problems at that time was that the paint that they used on the ship was catch fire and burn real rapidly. So they decided to try to remove that paint. So they had us chipping paint to remove the paint so it wouldn't burn. So I reckon you know that was a, a big 10, 12 hour a day job besides whatever else you did. And we was only there uh, until November the 9th. See, I had enlisted on the 28th of August, and on November the 9th, we left the States to go to war. <laughs> so that was a pretty brief period there. And uh, that's when we went down through Panama Canal. And uh, when we went through the Panama Canal, you know, it's a freshwater <laughs> lakes there between the, the two canals. So we pumped out all the salt water that was in the bilges, you know, and filled it up with fresh water. So when we went to the South Pacific, we had fresh water in all of our tanks. <coughs> and uh, we went to Tonga Islands first. And then we went from Tonga Island to New Caledonia. And from New Caledonia to the New Hebrides and from the New Hebrides to the Solomon. And that's where the biggest part of our wartime experience was in the Solomon Islands. Oh, okay. We got into a big uh, naval battle with the Japanese at Empress Augusta Bay. That was, uh, it's in this book, check it up. And then after after Empress Augusta Bay battle, we went on up to the Peleu Island. That was an island that was just east of Lady Gulf. Now this island had thousands of Japanese soldiers on it. And we did not have to engage those people at all because we could have went around it and, start, and cut their supply lines off and starved them out like we did at Truck. But General MacArthur said, no, we can't afford to have that many people behind our back. So they went into Peleu and we lost thousands of soldiers and Marines. They were unnecessarily. Just about all of, all of these veterans from that area can tell you that was absolutely unnecessary. But from there, we went into Lady Gulf, and we engaged the Japanese at Lady Gulf, landed the troops there that eventually captured the, ja captured the Philippine Islands. And we had a big sea battle there called the Battle of Sergao Straits. That's where we destroyed a large portion of the Japanese fleet. 
And that's where that where I saw that one ship that I showed you the picture yeah. of where we destroyed him. He's the only one I got to see sunk because I was inside. And um, then after the Philippines, we went on up to uh, the China coast, run up and down the China coast, uh, destroying everything we could, and also went to Borneo and cut off the fuel supply for J for Japan. We invaded uh, Borneo, Balakapan, and uh, landed the Australian troops there. And they captured the oil fields and they cut off the fuel <coughs> supply for Japan. And then we was getting ready to invade the homeland of Japan itself. And that's when they, President Truman dropped the big bomb and stopped it all. And we're mighty thankful he did. <coughs> because if he hadn't dropped that big bomb ever, we would have lost thousands of people. Because they had all their women and children armed with everything imaginable, even sharpened bamboo sticks. And they had told their people, men, women, and children, that we was some kind of un inhumane persons. They, they could stab us with bamboo sticks and put us out of commission. And all kinds of things like that. Anyway, when the <coughs> war was over, by then, uh, we had an opportunity and was assigned to go back down to truck the, the Japanese uh, island that had such a large um, uh, they had such a large uh, capability of, of doing us damage. And we had uh, gone around truck and, and cut off their supply line and starved them out. Well, we, they sent us down there to accept their surrender terms. And when our ship went into the outer harbor, we was afraid to go in the inside because of the mines. But when they came out to our ship, in one of those old Japanese boats, you see the pictures in here where they were bowing low <laughs> to our ship. You know, their custom. And they came aboard and we was cordial to their officers, served them coffee and tea and crumpets in the wardroom and accepted their surrender terms. We had a Marine general with us that accepted the terms for the American side. And then after the surrender terms was exchanged, they went ashore. They invited uh, our officers to go ashore and see their installations were completely destroyed. And you got some pictures in here of the Japanese soldiers that you could actually count their ribs. They were so thin. And uh, then we came back to the States in uh, 1945. And all of those guys that, that had a uh, large number of points, they left them off the ship in, Los in Long Beach, California all the guys that lived over there. They left them off in Long Beach, California, and then we brought the ship around through the Panama Canal and back up to Philadelphia and put the ship out of commission in Philadelphia. And I understand that the ship was in laid up in mothballs up there for a period of about 10, 10 to 15 years and was eventually sold for razor blades. Sold it for scrap. Mm -hmm. And that, that pretty well takes care of that. In Philadelphia, when you got married. Okay, we got married in, 
we got married uh, in 1945, and we went to housekeeping in Philadelphia. And I was still working the ship until 1946. And in 1946, we got transferred to to Green Cove Springs, Florida. And we helped put uh, ships out of commission down there in the St. Johns River. See, they brought the ships in out of the salt water in the, in the St. Johns River, which is fresh water. And we put them out of commission and they put them up in mothballs there. Well, uh, we was there until 1948, and my first enlistment was uh, was re was expired. I uh, re-enlisted in 1948, and things was getting kind of rough at that time. I transferred back to to sea on a USS Okanagan. That was a troop transport, and uh, the war broke out in 1950, the Korean War broke out in 1950, and we went around to the west coast, picked up a load of soldiers <coughs> out at uh, Mount Olympia, Washington, took them to Japan, then landed them at Incheon in Korea. Then we stayed with the troops in Korea for two years. And when the Japan or when the Chinese came in on and they had to retreat, we went around and rescued this the soldiers and Marines at Hung Nam and brought them back to Japan and regrouped their equipment and repaired it, took them back and re-landed them again. Then uh, in 1950, I got transferred back to the States to my first shore duty which was at Gary, Indiana. I was uh, a, uh, an instructor, seamanship and gunnery instructor at uh, Reserve Training Center at Gary, Indiana. Then uh, from Gary, <laughs> Indiana, I went, went to a survey ship where we, they was building the Atlantic Missile Range down through the Atlantic for the missiles that they fire now. And I was assigned to a ship where we went down there and surveyed the bottom of the ocean for the Atlantic Missile Range. And I got hurt on that ship. And I hurt my back ruptured discs in my back. And then from from there we came back and I was in a medical status for about six months. And then went back aboard a, a USS Vila Goose and we started supplying the 6th Fleet in the Mediterranean. We was hauling supplies out of Norfolk, Virginia to the Mediterranean Sea and resupplying <coughs> the, the ships and the bases over in the Mediterranean. We supplied the ship while they were both underway, which was a really a rough job. Made 17 of those trips to, to Europe, I mean to the Mediterranean. Came back, I made chief on that ship. Came back and was assigned to recruit training at Great Lakes, Illinois. I started re start training recruits. I trained recruits for a period of about 
<laughs> three and a half years. Then uh, I was assigned to the fleet training group at Guantanamo Bay that because the Vietnam War was on then. And I was assigned to teach the sailors how to refuel and resupply and rearm their ships at Guantanamo Bay. Well, we was there, I was there four years by then, four years. And I was coming up for close to retire. I could retire any time at, at then. And they were so they sent me back up to Great Lakes to uh, train recruits again. And I was up there for the last four years, and I retired with on a temporary disability. <laughs> retired list and uh, then when they kept me on active duty for two more years that made me 32 years service and I hung it up and come home <laughs>